Hey guys, welcome to my review of set number 75342 with 262 pieces, the Republic Fighter Tank. Now, me personally, I think this is a banger of a set for the minifigures, not including the um, two battle droids. You can just cross those out. <laughs> I mean, they're battle droids. I mean, they're not, they're really not that interesting unless you don't have any battle droids and you really want battle droids. What I'm more interested in is the arm printed Mace Windu and the three 187th clone troopers, especially the uh, clone commander. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, looking at the box, you can obviously see the fighter tank with the minifigures around just doing their own things, and then the arm printed Mace Windu, and then you can see all the minifigures at the bottom. The 332nd Trooper at the bottom left corner. And you get that black greebling with the Lego Star Wars logo. And the orange yellow strip. I think it's more yellow to be honest. But then you can see the all the minifigures sprawled around like I said. And then there's this little, I think it's a sand planet in the background. I'm not sure what sand planet. It almost looks like Pasana. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'm not sure. I mean, the fighter tank obviously never appears on Pasana, so, like, I don't know. But, turning it on the top, you can see the 27th Legion Clone Commander in its actual size. It's how much like a boxes do it. And then on the side, you have the side box art, which is always a nice inclusion from these LEGO sets. Really shows some detail that sometimes LEGO's lacking in. Also, on the back, you have the images that show off what it can do and just different... Uh, I don't know. Different ways that the minifigures are clinging, I guess. Bottom, nothing else there except for logo. Yep, and that's really the box of the fire tank. Alright, so this is the finished product, and it's not all that bad. I know this set has gotten a lot of hate from a lot of fans just because of things like a massive belly-looking thing, I guess. I don't know, but all, it's not... All that bad, especially with the uh, minifigures like the Mace Windu and the Clone Troopers, which we'll get into right now. Alright, first off, we got the good old B-1 Battle Droid, which is nothing new, really. I mean, it's a Battle Droid. They come in most clone sets, so they're not that rare. You probably have one if you're a Lego, Lego Star Wars collector, so there's not much to go over it, but... I will say that it's using a gunmetal gray blaster, which I think LEGO's been giving Battle Droids gunmetal gray blasters for maybe the past two years. I don't know, but they originally just had black bat, black um, blasters, so they changed it to gunmetal gray, and I think that's actually better. I like black blasters have always been kind of bland to me. I like the gunmetal gray and the silver blaster, so that's nice. But then it's got the head, obviously, the body, the two arms, which are different, if you, you didn't notice that on a battle droid. One has, the clips are facing like the same way, I guess, and then the other, they're facing different ways, just so you can hold the blaster. So the arms are different, and then you got the legs, and uh, there's not much to it, but uh, you get two of them in the set, so yeah, B1 battle droid. Okay, now next up is the 187th trooper, which is probably a big reason why some people are buying this set. It's a very good quality minifigure. It's, compared to other clones, it has a lot of detail. Like, if you get the 501st Clone Trooper, it does not have this much detail. Because this one, I mean, you look at it, it's got the black and the strap. And it's got a lot of purple with the purple feet. And they basically took the, they took a mixture of, like, the Phase 2 Clone Troopers, like the 501st Clone Trooper, and they mixed it with, like, the old Shock Troopers, because the helmet is, like, the same template as the Shock Troopers, but they just made it purple, and I think it looks phenomenal. It's got incredible detail. With the On the back, you can see the gray strap and the purple belt, and then the purple belt is also on the front, obviously, and the gray strap with that kind of, like, black right shoulder pad thing. I don't know. That looks great, though. It's a great detail. Now, I don't know that much, like, on accuracy, because this obviously, or, well, it's just not a canon trooper. It was never actually in the movies. Hasbro created it as an action figure because it was purple, and they wanted to make it Mace Windu's clone trooper. So, I don't know all that much on the accuracy of it, but I think just it's a good quality minifigure, and I think it looks great. And a big reason why some people are going to buy this. It's got the gray markings on its 
on the right and left of the legs, which looks great. And then really, yeah, there's not much else. It's got, yeah, <laughs> all together. The helmet print is great. Like I said, they took the 501st helmet and basically just made it better with more detail with the purple at the bottom and then all the gray lines. That looks great. Then the purple stripe at the top looks good. I mean, really, it's just a, it's a great minifigure, and, um, you get two of them in this set, just like the B1 Battle Droid, so, yeah, that's nice. All right, now, this guy is the 187th Clone Commander, and he's got that unique helmet that was used in the General Grievous Starfighter with the Utapau Clone Trooper, the Airborne Trooper, and it looked great on that, and that minifigure went really high up in price, so after this set retires, this clone trooper might be worth a lot and that's a big reason why i bought this set is because the troopers will maybe worth be worth a lot eventually so that's a good reason to get the set now because it retires i think it should retire at the end of this year but anyways moving on to the actual minifigure it's great the helmet detail is phenomenal with the purple on the sides and the visor looks great the black vent on the side, I think that looks good. It's a little weird. I don't know how I feel about that oval shape, but I can look past it. <laughs> I, yeah, but it's a really good quality minifigure, and man, I love it. Also, what this one has that has been kind of what LEGO has been doing, It's a lot of people don't like it. I don't as much mind it, but the um, printed waist capes, in this case, it's the tan on the legs. I don't think it looks horrible. I know a lot of people prefer the actual waist cape, and so do I, but I don't, like, think the minifigure's horrible just because it doesn't have a waist cape. I mean, because it's got incredible detail with the waist cape and then the tan straps on the back and on the front, and then the torso is just phenomenal with, just like the 187 Trooper, it's got that black shoulder pad thing, which I think looks great. One thing that I like on the 187 Troopers that um, is not on this minifigure is there's a lot more detail on the legs of the 187 Trooper. Like, the feet are purple, and they don't have this on the Clone Commander, which I can look past that because it's not that bad, but yeah, I really enjoyed that on the 187 Troopers. Also, I think the 187 Troopers have a little bit more detail on the helmets, but just because this helmet is a really good mold, in my opinion, I think that's just... I can look past that it's not as detailed and kind of look more at the mold. And then obviously he's got that blaster rifle thing with the uh, candle, black candle piece on the end, which is a classic blaster that they've used on many different clones and just characters alike. There was a minifigure in the 501st Battle Pack from 2020 that had that minifigure, so, or that blaster, sorry. So yeah, 187th Clone Command, Command, yeah. Commander is a great minifigure. And now I know I've only had like positives for all these minifigures, but um, I've basically got more positives now for this Mace Windu minifigure. Man, it's great. It's the same um, Mace Windu figure as the one you got in the UCS gunship, but this one is just, it's better. It's got the arm printing and that um, frosted purple lightsaber looks great it's a lot more accurate compared to the ones they were using in the past that were more translucent because um lightsabers aren't translucent i think lego now realized that so it's good that they fixed that and the frosted one looks really good there's no air bubbles or anything and that's great and the arm printing is phenomenal with the jedi symbol on his left arm and then just i guess a calm link on his right arm and that just looks great it kind of like spices up the minifigure a little bit more and that's phenomenal and then his leg printing is great he does not have dual molded legs but the printing on the front is amazing with the white at the bottom and then the dark tan robes at the top that looks great and then his face expression looks pretty good you know there's not much it's it's a Mace Windu angry face, you know? That's what you expect to see on, like, a Mace Windu minifigure. Or at least that's what I expect, expect I guess. And then he's got the black hands, and that looks great. The black clip hand things. <laughs> and then the brown belt that goes all the way around his body, that looks phenomenal. And then there's 
two little things on his belt on the front that just add a little bit of detail and that's that's nice there's nothing on the back except for a little pouch but you can't really notice it unless you look really closely but anyways i think the mace window figure is really great and i basically i've had only positives for these minifigures except the b1 battle droids which are kind of just you know they're b1 battle droids they're kind of bland but yeah oh and i forgot to mention that the um clone troopers have this the normal clone head under them and that's the same with the clone commander they have the same head they're clone troopers so you probably know what a clone head looks like but anyways just showing you okay now minifigures aside it's time to look at the actual fighter tank now this is the third model of the fighter tank they had one in 2017 and then the original one was in i think it was in 2009 but don't quote me on that because i'm not 100 percent sure but this is the newest one from 2022 and man I don't know. I got them some things to say about it. Considering I personally own the 2017 version over there. I don't this one's definitely bigger, but it's got some negatives. One thing that I just don't like and I can't overlook is that it just looks it's just it comes to an abrupt stop. Like it's just got this complete wall. And that's just a complete abrupt stop. It doesn't have any detail that kind of like builds it down. Just a stop. Which I don't think that looks good. It kind of looks like it's just like just a model that goes. It just like it's flat and then it just shoots up. So I don't know. I don't really like that. But some people might not mind it as much. The turrets or the blaster things. I don't know. The guns, cannons on it are not bad. They, you know, they function well. They have these spring-loaded missile functions. So if you press this way on it it will shoot the spring-loaded shooter off and it can be tricky sometimes oh, didn't really work here <laughs> yeah but anyways you just press down on it like that and or to the side on it and it'll shoot out and that's your spring-loaded bullet spring-loaded shooter and then it has the turret that kind of comes out of it and that's nice and it's the same concept on the other side with the spring-loaded shooter and the cannon so and another thing that's probably important to point out is that there is a gap in between the actual fighter tank and the guns that can't really be fixed just by the way it's connected this white piece it just doesn't perfectly go on come on it doesn't go on perfectly but so there's a little bit of a gap oh and i just shot off a spring loaded shooter spring loaded bullet but now we can get well first let me point something out there is great detail on this fighter tank now a lot of people complain that or a lot of people say that there's a too many stickers on this and while i don't really mind stickers but one thing that i do appreciate with the stickers in this is they offer a lot of detail right here like a lot of detail that you couldn't get brick built you get in the stickers on this set and that is one thing that makes this set look phenomenal and i love that about the set now these engines over here they kind of like pop out a little bit and i actually like that the one thing that is different from the 2017 model is that the black vents parts is coming out of the front. On the 2017 model, it's from the side. So I'm not actually sure which one is completely accurate, but I I think this one looks probably a little bit better, especially since it's bigger. It's got a little bit more detail, so I like that. And then obviously, it's got this the green on it, which looks good. It kind of just, it makes the set pop, and I think that looks nice. Now, getting into the play features, start with this top hatch up here which i find is very interesting that it uses this um longer like hilt that i think was made in monkey king the monkey king sets so they're using it here and that's very interesting now one thing that's interesting or nice to point out on this is the top really it look it's really flush with the rest of the uh top and i think that's really nice that flushness <laughs> is really nice, so I like that. And But to open this, you kind of have to like pry at it a little bit, like at the studs with your fingernails, or open this back hatch, which, speaking of this back hatch, we'll look at that in a second. You kind of have to, and then you just, you can push it up from there, 
And so that's nice. You can open it right there. And then you have access to the interior, which we'll look at in a second. Well, actually, we'll get it right now. You can put a minifigure up into the top. For instance, I'll put the clone officer because that's how they have it on the box. One thing that is not so great about this set is you can't close it, obviously, with him standing. But if you take the blaster off and you try to sit him down, he doesn't fit. You cannot sit him down and close the top. So there's no way to put a minifigure in the top and it close all the way. So that's kind of a minus in the set. That's one thing you can bump it for, but I don't really mind it because mine's going on display and I'm not really going to be playing with it and putting minifigures in it. But the ramp on this thing is... I don't like it. I gotta say, I really don't like the ramp on this. The You can see, like, this back, and it doesn't really look great. They, especially since they put this, like... Well, it actually looks kind of cool with the gray circle on it. But the fact that you can see the bottom of the pieces doesn't look phenomenal. And then also, when you open it, it doesn't go all the way down. It kind of just, like, sits right here. Which doesn't look great, because, like... It should go all the way to the ground, kind of, so it looks a little more like it's slanted, like how a ramp should be. But in this case, it's not, and you put a minifigure on it, and it's kind of just, you know, it, it's not down. So, I don't really like that. Some people can look past that, but for some reason, I can't. I just don't like it. But, another thing is, there's some space down there. We'll get into what's up front a little later. Theoretically, you could shove a minifigure in there. If you wanted to, take the blaster out or something, put it down, you know, shove them in there and put a minifigure in there. I don't know. It doesn't look great. It's not, I don't think it's how Lego intended for you to do it, but you can if you want to. Now, moving to the front, we have the kind of what a lot of people think is one of the worst parts about this set. And that it kind of comes down and then it's got this like round thing you know round beer belly <laughs> you could call it <laughs> but it has a function you can open it up and it's got this spot in there that you can put a minifigure in this case i'll put a 187 trooper sit him down in there and it will close perfectly on him and so that looks you know it's good there was are supposed to be two clone troopers in the fighter tank. Two clone troopers were supposed to fit in the fighter tank. So that's accurate, but I don't know. They kind of executed it in a weird way. Another thing is that it doesn't have a control panel. It should have a control panel, but they didn't. Lego didn't give it a control panel. They could have easily fit a control panel in there, but they didn't. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm really surprised they didn't because it would have looked a lot better instead of just this blank space right there, but... It's not too big of a deal. Anyways, now, I don't, <laughs> long pause there. There's not much else to say about it. It's a uh, good fighter tank. There are the um, lenses, well, not lenses, but like the part that the clone trooper would look through. And that doesn't look bad. I think it looks actually kind of menacing when you look at it like that. So that looks good. But anyways, let's look at the in antennas in the back. These silver things, they're just, you know, they're there. That's accurate. But anyways, there's not much else that I have to say about this clone turbo tank. Wait, turbo tank. I just called it a turbo tank. Oh my gosh. I'm going insane, guys. <laughs> I'm going insane. But there's not much else I have to say about it. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And see you next time for my reviews of those sets. Hopefully I can get them out soon. Bye.